In today's beginner friendly video, I'm showing you a quick and dirty code example that helps us generate images such as this. You're going to be using Google Colab and this image is in the style of a digital sketch art. So that's the image that you want to generate and we're using something called as diffusers for this. Now, the diffusers library is quite popular and you can read more about it on Hugging Face if you wanted to. Uh, but just for your information, I'm creating a video dedicated just for diffusers in my other playlist which is the LLM concepts playlist and I'll be covering all the details like the different layers and how images are generated with diffusers, all of that and, and the complete architecture. So in case you want to wait for that, you can wait for that as well. Um, basically what we are interested in are the diffusion pipelines which help us generate uh, images really, really easily, right? End to end class designed for to rapidly generate samples. And that's the, that's the one we need. Now I'll be sharing the link of this Google Colab notebook in the description of this video. So make sure you check it out and save a copy of this notebook in your own drive so you can edit it the way you want. On the right, you can also connect to a um, compute. So in, in my case, I've connected to T4, which is a GPU. And here, what we start with is mounting the Google Drive. So we import drive from google.colab and then we mount the drive the reason we need the drive is because the image that we'll generate, we want to save it somewhere. So that's the reason we have the drive. And then we install these three libraries. Now you know that the first one, which is the diffuser library, is the most important because that's how we'll be generating the image. And then you also have transformers, scipy, ftfy, which is fixed text for you to help with um, text encoding, uh, fixing text encoding issues, and ipy widgets to help us build interactive widgets inside the Google Colab. And uh, all of these are redirected to slash dev slash null. The transformers, as you already know, help us work with prompts and text related stuff. So all of these are uh, routed to slash, uh, slash dev slash null. The reason for that is because uh, when we run this, we don't want those installation messages, installing and then install all of that. We, we don't want that. So that's why we have redirected these. And then you, from Google Colab, you also import output and you imp uh, enable custom widget manager. The reason for that is this uh, widget, which is going to help us log in to Hugging Face. That's where we'll be getting our um, model from. So you'll have to share your Hugging Face API key out here. So you have your custom widget manager and you node use your notebook to log in to Hugging Face. All right. And here is where we're importing Torch and we're importing diffusers. Uh, from diffusers, we are importing a stable diffusion pipeline. So if you remember, I showed you in diffusers, the thing that we need the most right now in today's video is the diffusion pipeline. So that's what we've imported here. And the diffusion pipeline helps us uh, import the model that we need, which is stable diffusion v1.4. And uh, this helps us with floating point 16. And uh, we're using PyTorch again, uh, because this will help us with uh, to work with GPU. And we're saying use auth token true because uh, yes, we are working with the private model from Hugging Face. So yes, we need uh, authentication. Then you use pipe and pipe.2 uh, CUDA, CUDA uh, enabled devices, which is our GPU. Create a new directory called save, saved data. And from Torch, you'll import something called as autocast, right? And autocast is what enables you to work with uh, CUDA enabled devices uh, and, and also um, uh, you know, makes everything very computationally efficient. Then you uh, start a for loop, which only runs once, as you can see, it's only running it once. And the prompt is this, which is cat is fighting with robots and is in the style of digital art using Autocast CUDA. And the image is generated with the help of uh, the pipe that we created earlier, which was our stable diffusion pipeline. Uh, which helps us generate these images and you send in the prompt and the height and width of the image and the inference steps. And then you save the image in the saved data. Saved data is the, the directory that we had created earlier. And this is the name of the image that, that that's how it will be saved. And this is the image that's generated. Now uh, you also import CV2 here uh, because we want to resize the image. Now this, this is something you might need to do because if you want the image to be a particular size and shape, you can resize using computer vision CV2, open open CV, I mean, and then you import glob, which will help us find that image uh, in the saved content and then write that image. And finally, what we do is we uh, save that image to our drive from the local folder, the saved data folder. We'll send it to our drive because we have mounted drive in the first line itself. Okay, so this is how it works. I'll share the link, like I said, 
uh, if you don't uh, know how diffusers work it's completely all right this is just to get your hands dirty just to get you uh, to start using these models without a lot of friction because if i if you start learning too much about uh, diffusers and how they work and then you yeah, and then it becomes probably one year <laughs> till you actually start to use these models so that's why i want to show you a very small example so that it just you just you're just able to overcome your anxiety with uh, AI models, right, and how to use them, and that's why I'm using a very simple model, nothing very complicated, something that you can use in a in a free instance, like a free T4 instance inside the Google Colab, right? You don't have to use an A100 or V100 or something like that. So that's that was the reason I sh I've showed you this video, uh, just to just to help you overcome um, that anxiety that you might have on, on how do I how do you start using these AI models, uh, and then we'll just scale this up. We'll just start using more and more, uh, you know, bigger models and more and more refined and sophisticated models and so on uh, so all right thank you so much for watching i hope you're enjoying this series which is the um, ai let, let me actually show it on my screen yeah so this is the series that i'm working on which is the ai and lm project series and this video is also part of this all of these videos are like very simple and straightforward and up until now like we've built like 12 uh, mm -hmm. projects and all of these are really simple and straightforward we haven't done anything uh, big uh, up until now that's because i'm warming you up for uh the bigger projects that we we'll build all right so make sure you watch the other videos in this series as well do sh share this with your friends it's all for free subscribe don't forget to subscribe thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video